So guys, this is the box for the Lenovo Vibe K4 Note and inside the box you get the handset, travel adapter, USB cable, warranty card, user guide, back cover and a screen film and the specifications etc are written on the back of the box as is seen over here. So let's just show you the back cover. This is what the back cover looks like. It's a transparent back cover and the smartphone with the back cover. So apart from this, the device weighs around 158 grams and the display on this is a 5.5 inch full HD display, 441 PPI and 3.5 mm jack on the top. And apart from that, you have the volume rocker as well as the power button on the side and the micro USB port on the bottom. The Lenovo Vibe K4 Note comes with a 3300 mAh battery which is non-user removable and on the back you have the two dual SIM slots and both are 4G enabled and one SIM slot, the second SIM slot is the hybrid SIM slot which is seen over here and you have the fingerprint sensor also over there as is seen and both are dual micro SIMs, both enable LTE support and don't remove the battery that's written over there the rear cover is polycarbonate and the display is scratch resistant Corning Gorilla Glass 3 and this is what is inside the hood MediaTek MT6735 clocked in at 1.30 GHz octa-core processor 3 GB of RAM a nice display full HD display Android 5.1 inside and battery level all good and let's just show you the sensors list of sensors on this smartphone so these are all the sensors present inside and apart from this overall UI etc felt really okay enough. This is not the Vibe UI. This is a light version of the Vibe UI. Uh, somewhat stripped down as is visible. Not that heavy. Felt snappy enough while using. And it was easy to transition between different things. The camera on this device is a 13 megapixel back camera with face detection autofocus with dual color LED flash and a f2.2 aperture ISO cell. These are all the modes, HDR mode etc. And these are the shots that we took with the camera. The shots came out okay enough, we were in a very low light condition and few of the shots involving people also came out okay. There was some noise but not that much and there was considerable detail. It's not the best 13 megapixel camera around but it's still it's good and it gets the job done. Brightness on this device is 450 nits and it supports 10 point multi-touch and this is the selfie that we took from the front 5 megapixel camera. Okay enough, the color reproduction is nice. And this is the same shot that we showed previously done again using HDR mode and this came out pretty clear. It looks nice and better than the previous image. These are all of the options and settings inside the camera application which can be seen over here. Photo resolution and apart from this you can select the aspect ratio. Video quality can also be selected. So the camera app is not that much heavy but still a stripped down version of that we have seen on Vibe UI. Let's just test the benchmarks. So we got a score of 37,878 on the Antutu benchmark. It's an average score, not that great, not a flagship level score. And on the Geekbench benchmark, we got 614 on the single core. And we got a score of around 2,621 on the multi-core score on the Geekbench 3 benchmark. It is not that great, but still it's above average or in the average region. And on the Nina Mark 2 benchmark, we got a score of around 56.2 frames per second, which is also okay enough. On the Quadrant Standard, we got a score of around 19,481. It has a Mali T720 MP3 GPU up to 450 MHz. And playing small games was okay on this device. We played few small games like Beach Buggy Blitz and we also played Crossy Road. And it breezed through them very nicely. But when we shifted to heavy games like Asphalt 8 and we played them for a short while for around 5 to 10 minutes or so we found out that on the maximum possible settings the game did lag for some time and apart from this we did a small heating test also while running the Antutu benchmark we found out that the temperature did not rise that much it was around 33 to 34 degrees celsius mark and it was okay it wasn't that high and when we were playing asphalt 8 it was around 36 degrees mark but it never crossed 40 degrees even during that time so 
that speaks volumes and this is a 4K HD video being played on this device. So the audio did go away at some points which shows that it isn't that great in terms of performance but okay enough and the Dolby audio is really great on this device. It has two 5 watt speakers and a three microphone audio input system which makes it a very nice device for multimedia consumption and multitasking was also fairly easy on this device we were able to switch between open applications easily because of the three gigabyte ram on this device and during our initial time with the fingerprint sensor we found that it worked eight out of ten times it works nicely but does not register every time so apart from this this is the ant vr headset which comes bundled with the smartphone at a price of around 12499 and it's a nice vr headset and as you can see it in action you just have to connect the headset on it uh, visible right now like this you have to connect the smartphone inside the headset and you can see all of that stuff good vr stuff and this smartphone is a nice smartphone for the price for which it retails for a price of 11999 this smartphone is really value for money and registration for first flash sale on january 19 2015 have already begun so guys this was all for our lenovo vibe k4 note initial hands-on and unboxing in case you like this video then don't forget to hit the thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel this is ayat from inspiredrise.com signing off